In 1996, U.S. farmers used a BT variety on only about a percent and a half of all corn acres. That was the first year a BT variety was commercially available, and the adoption of the trait has been rapid. Growers last year used a BT variety on 79 percent of their corn acres, down two points from the high of 81 percent in 2015. BT corn is genetically engineered to produce a toxic protein for control of corn rootworms, earworms, or European corn borers throughout the growing season. But Nebraska Extension entomologist Bob Wright says more farmers may be opting for a non-BT corn variety this year. He joined us earlier this week to explain why. Well, we heard feedback from growers at winter extension meetings this past year that uh, people are thinking of looking at ways to cut costs and since we've introduced BT corn in 1996, the, the number of European corn borers have, have greatly declined in Nebraska and a lot of other Midwestern states. And people are, one, one approach is people are looking at ways to cut back on costs and they're thinking about not paying for the, the added costs of the above ground traits uh, that, that are active against caterpillars like European corn borer. And that, that may work in some areas. There still are corn borers out in Nebraska so you can't totally ignore the field. There, you need to scout if you're not having protection from BT traits. So I just want to alert people, uh, if you're not going to have above ground traits, be watchful that certain combinations of planting date and hybrid maturity may encourage corn borer uh, activity. And you need to be ready to respond. You need to be scouting your field. If you haven't had a crop consultant, that might be something you need to to add is to make sure that the field is monitored on a regular basis. So if, if you do have corn borers in your area, you, you can catch it early enough that you have time to respond before there's economic damage or before it's too late to control them. Uh, the issue is they don't discriminate between BT or non-BT fields, so they'll lay eggs wherever they can find corn at the right stage. And uh, if there's enough of them, they, they might cause economic damage. So you need to scout for the world feeding damage and we have uh, worksheets that growers can look at in terms of uh, taking that scouting information and, and making a calculation whether it's likely to have economic loss. And if you do treat, are you likely, likely to uh, increase your profit or, or decrease your profit by treating? So we have good resources, uh, two different NEB guides, one for first generation corn borers and one for second generation corn borers that we've maintained from the years before we had BT corn where people routinely treated for corn borers. If you're using non-BT, what insecticide options would you have? Well, in terms of the, the first generation, uh, historically we've preferred granular insecticides because they get they fall down into the whirl and uh, get down to where the corn borers are feeding. That typically has better control. You can also use uh, foliar insecticides, but it may not work as well. In terms of the uh, the second generation, uh, foliar insecticides, typically pyrethroids, have been used for European corn borer control. And the other issue, you need scouting to know the, the right timing, uh, particularly for second generation corn borers, as a relatively short window of time before uh, the the hatching caterpillars born to the stalk and are lo no longer able to be controlled with insecticides. Even if you are going to use a BT variety, can you discuss more about the level of protection that we're seeing those varieties offer and how much scouting is still needed? Well, there's two different issues with BT corns. Uh, we have some BT corns uh, that have historically had activity against western bean cutworm, uh, originally the Herculex uh, hybrids and now sm some of the various of the smart stacks and other, other hybrids have above ground traits that are active against a western bean cutworm. One of these proteins called Cry1F, we're seeing reports from Nebraska and other states that they're not as effective as they used to be. And our basic recommendation now for western bean cutworm is to scout all fields uh, for western bean cutworm and treat if, if needed. We don't know for sure where the resistance is, but it's potentially any place in the state.